It's nice to meet you, Katie. Do you want to hang out? Okay. Megan pulls off what used to be pretty inconceivable. A satisfying social satire with thrills and laughs, but is also unexpectedly wholesome, breaking down its characters with more nuance than the unsuspecting audience is prepared for. I won't let anything harm you. Ever again. Plane is a bafflingly satisfying low-budget action thriller. When talent is behind and in front of the camera, it goes to show that a blockbuster amount of cash doesn't really matter. I like this guy. I would take 10 or 20 Plane movies over a single Thor Love and Thunder or Black Adam for the same amount of studio resources. We're getting off this island. Scream 6 builds its mythology in interesting ways with its new cast, while simultaneously sprinkling in old faces to keep the tension humming. The action is meticulously crafted to perfection, but the script isn't as clever as it thinks it is. The meta humor still struggles to be both relevant or funny and is distractingly hit or miss. It never works out for the dipshit in the mask. However, the action is so good and the cast is so charming, there is room for debate whether this is the superior entry in the franchise thus far, undeniably the best of its immediate predecessors. Rocking a cast that gives tear-worthy performances filled with both nuance and compassion, Jesus Revolution provides an answer to the failing religious establishment. Be a place of community, unity, and safety for those in need of a friend, not a place of politics, hatred, and rejection. Sixty-five is a better Jurassic movie than the last few Jurassic movies. With only two characters, the writers played it smart by creating just enough development to keep the audience engaged and keep the journey moving swiftly across beautiful landscapes populated by treacherous creatures. 2023 seems to be the year for first-time directors, as both Woods and Beck have constructed an awesome 93-minute thriller that ends in just the right place, with just the right amount of climactic spectacle. It won't earn any awards, but it will become a home video juggernaut. You and I are gonna get home. Home, family. Ready? <laughs> One might think that a stationary setting for a character-based drama such as this would get dull very fast. But from start to finish, I was floored. The way the camera lingers, letting the actors take full control of the scene, is remarkably engaging. The scenes are constructed to be so up close and personal that you can feel the gravitas of the performances, and the talent on screen do their damnedest to ensure that every fiber of their being is committed to creating the level of disturbed nature required for these roles. Your family must choose to willingly sacrifice one of the three of you to prevent the apocalypse. I can see how, given the theological nature of the literature, that this could be a very hit or miss film for many people. For me, however, M. Knight may have constructed his most visually dazzling and grandiose picture yet with Knock at the Cabin, a work of art that showcases the beauty of distress and the disconnect of one's family to the rest of the world. Always together. Always together. I will ask for the last time. Will you make a choice?
Hot take, Shazam! Fury of the Gods is one of the best superhero films in the last few years. Unlike recent films like Black Adam or Venom Let There Be Carnage, both which feel so incredibly hollow, or the unbearable, unwatchable, unbelievably vile attempt at filmmaking that was Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, the latest entry in the DCEU brings back the campy, childlike energy that superhero properties used to be masters at. Hey, police Fury of the Gods juggles both high-octane action and small-scale familial melodrama in a fascinatingly satisfying way. It's not bold, it's not overproduced, it's not trying to say anything particularly nuanced, and that's exactly what makes it so entertaining. It wants to put a smile on your face, and as long as you don't have a personal vendetta against it, it will. Few franchises can gain in momentum like Creed. Although still not quite to blockbuster stature, these films have been increasingly more successful with each outing. And that's because of one undeniable fact. They appeal to a broad audience thanks to their overall excellence. Creed 3 is no exception. Donning a new chapter for the titular character, the script can explore more poignant and dramatic avenues for the film to embark on. By the time the third act comes in swinging, tears have been shed, rivalries have been set, and the stakes have been established, creating a thrilling, emotional, and brutal climax that not only feels real, but is perfectly captivating. I'm coming for it all. It's not going to stop. Then you make him. Boasting an impressive level of film mastery for a directorial debut, the franchise is in good hands with Jordan in front of and behind the camera. You out there boxing. I need you to start fighting. Some will complain that some scenes drag on for too long, and don't get it confused, the movie is insanely long for what it is. But those slower scenes are performed with such exquisite gravitas and shot to perfection that it's hard to not be blown away with what's on screen. Although there is some room for improvement in the emotional aspects of the film, John Wick Chapter 4 is peak craftsmanship and undoubtedly one of the best action movies ever made. Funny, thrilling, and surprisingly poignant, Honor Among Thaves is everything blockbusters of late have been trying to be. The chemistry amongst the cast is stellar, and the fight scenes are John Wick level satisfying, albeit somewhat far and few between. The wit of the script, however, shines in every minute, creating some true gut-busting laughs that I haven't had in a movie in a long time. Once the dead man is revived, we can ask him five questions, at which point he will die again, never to be re-revived. Were you killed in the Battle of the Everhorse? Yes. Four more questions, right? Yes. No, 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 that, that wasn't for you. Did that count as a question? Yes. Damn it. Only answer when I talk to you, okay? Yes. Why did you say okay at the end of that? I didn't. It's also very well directed. It won't be the prettiest film of the year, but it definitely has some great one-shots and transitions with decent enough visual effects to make the fantastical world feel properly realized. Paramount is on a roll, and like last year's Top Gun Maverick, this film is in its own way a perfect time at the movies. 